Welcome to another online personals watch service spotlight. This is our second service spotlight ever. And today we have John Maitland, who is the CEO and founder of a service called photoverify.com. So welcome to the interview, John. I appreciate Morning. your time. So Thank tell you. us more, ver photo verified. Now you verify photographs. How do you do that? Well, basically, uh, we have a system that is a patent pending uh, system that was developed to basically fill a need that we identified in the market, which is obviously uh, the problem with people being able to far too easily create fake uh, personas on the internet. It's it's not just a problem that's limited to dating sites. Obviously, it's uh, heavily uh, prevalent in the social networking sector as well but um, the ability for people to just simply copy and paste a, a photo of someone uh, else and just put a, a, a fake profile up uh, is is a big issue in the industry as well as uh, another major complaint in the industry as I'm sure you well know is that of people posting sorely outdated photos so whereas uh, someone expects that they're going to be meeting the person in the photo the the actual person it ends up the photo was 10 years earlier in their uh, heyday so to speak and you know that's not who it is so the idea behind photo verified is that the photos will be recent and uh, authenticated uh, by using our system and Unlike some other processes which have tried to do something similar, ours involves uh, a human element absolutely. Uh, there are some technical areas of the system that uh, help us with certain filtering, but every single photo that's processed through photoverified.com ends up being looked at by one of our verifiers. So that gives us an edge as far as um, I, I think the credibility that uh, people are going to see that uh, rather than just it being an automated process entirely that someone is actually looking at this photo uh, so you won't end up with uh, the ability for people to fool the system or, uh, or, or try and get around the system uh, the way that some others who have tried uh, this have, uh, have uh, run into. Where are your people based? You must have a low cost base to be able to uh, have real people looking at the photographs. Are they offshore? Well, we're looking at both uh, processes right now. Uh, as a startup, obviously, cost is a, is a big issue for us, but uh, our main base is in Toronto, Ontario, and Canada. Uh, but we are looking at, uh, you know, once we, we are, again, we are in a startup phase, and once we do get uh, partnered with especially some larger services, then uh, we're certainly looking at the potential of having offshore data centers. It's not, you know, some of the uh, traditional areas where it's a concern to have offshore uh, are not such a concern for us being the language barrier because our service doesn't require anyone to actually speak to someone. Uh, the verifiers simply are entering in uh, data and, uh, and that's it. So, I mean, as long as they're able to view the photos, uh, they're obviously trained in... Uh, how to recognize signs of someone trying to manipulate uh, the system but uh, as long as they're able to enter in the codes uh, that are uh, generated for each unique user then that's all that we really need. So there's three two elements as the uh, the approval of the photograph making sure that it meets the requirements of the particular website but also of course the verification so we've got the mm -hmm. approval and the verification. Tell us more about the verification process. How do you make sure that the photographs are really of the people who they you know, who, who are on the service? Well, basically, what we have is a system where, uh, first of all, when you sign up through whatever partner site you're uh, coming to us from, you're receiving an email from the system that is a track link that confirms of course uh, you know that you have access to the email address that you're signed up for which is pretty standard yeah. Um, yeah. so once they click on that link they come to us now we know that yes this is a person who's associated to this email address and that account from the partner site now the next step is that our system generates a unique um, code for them to display in the photo that they're going to send to us there's uh, currently two uh, workflows that they're able to submit a photo through. They can either choose to submit using a digital camera, which includes um, uh, can include a cell phone camera, or 
they can choose to use a web camera, which is uh, obviously integrated into a lot of uh, computers these days. Um, so whichever process they choose, they're then brought to a timed process where they're given their unique code and they're going to display that code uh, to the system. Now, one of the things that we do incorporate, uh, and it sounds kind of silly to some people when they first, uh, when they first hear about it, but what we have people do is uh, once they're given the code, they write it down with uh, their black magic marker uh, and they crumple the paper. Then they flatten it out again. Now, the reason that we have them do that is because from the perspective of a verifier looking for signs of any kind of manipulation, it's a lot harder to Photoshop um, a, crumpled, a code into a crumpled piece of paper which has uh, depth and different texture than, uh, than you would if you're just holding up a solid white piece of paper. It's really easy for me to use a magic wand tool and just, you know, put in a, uh, a different code or something like that into a solid white piece of paper. But with something that has that uh, detail and texture, it's a lot harder. Um, so after they have displayed the photo, they're basically taking a photo, uh, you know, kind of, if I had a code here, I'd just hold it up. And then they're sending that to the system. From the user side, that's that's it. They're done. Uh, then it goes to our verification system, which um, is a is a process that has been very well thought out. Uh, we believe um, and tested thoroughly to limit the ability of anyone to try and fool the system, and also to make sure that our system works uh, to its uh, best capacity to do what we're doing, which is trying to essentially make sure that the person who is seen in that photo is the person that you're going to be going to be uh, dealing with or you're communicating with. So basically at the stage where we get to the verifiers instead of just having a system where a verifier can just keep clicking essentially the drinking bird scenario where they're just you know uh, they keep clicking accept or, or something like that because you know the human element always uh, introduces that possibility of laziness or whatever um, it's a double blind system so the verifier doesn't actually know the code that they're verifying so all they're seeing is the photo of the person and the code that they're displaying and they're typing that in or they're rejecting it outright for reasons such as the person uh, is covering their face or they're wearing you know a hat that's too low or you know anything like that they can just reject the photo outright the users then sent the reasons for the rejection and either given an ability to uh, resubmit or if we find that they're actually trying to be malicious with the system then we can ban them outright from uh, from resubmitting but assuming that everything is good the verifier is just typing in the code that they see and pressing accept. If the code is incorrect, then meaning that the code that the verifier has typed in, the uh, system doesn't recognize it as the one that was given to the user, what happens is it's then escalated to another verifier. So what we assume is that there's always the possibility that someone's going to make a typo. And if that happens, then we have another verifier who's going to take a look at it. And, of course, the verifier who's taking a look at it for the second time doesn't know that uh, someone else has looked at it. And also important is that that same verifier who may have made that typo will not be the one that will see that picture again. No matter where it comes into the queue, uh, they will not be the ones that will be verifying it for the second time. So if, they, uh, type, if the next verifier types in the code and it's correct, then they're accepted and uh, everything's good to go. If there's a second error then we assume either that uh, everyone's really bad at typing or there's a problem that maybe the code that they're displaying isn't correct which could be a sign of uh, an attempt to fool the system uh, so then it gets escalated to a manager and the manager has the ability to get more detail out of uh, you know, seeing more detailed information about the user, what code exactly was given. And, you know, sometimes it, it could be just a simple thing where uh, the person, you know, both of them are, are looking at a, a letter or a number and thinking that it's something else and, you know, people's sloppy handwriting or whatever. But uh, the manager then has the ability to uh, take a look at it and make a decision at that point. Gotcha. I love the crumpled up paper part. Now, is that the part mm -hmm. that's patented? What part of this process have you, have you locked down? 
Well, we don't have a patent issued yet. It's pending, yeah. uh, but that is part of the process that we're uh, we're patenting, as well as some of the uh, technical details that um, basically allow us to filter out other signs of uh, potential manipulation. So basically, what happens is that the system can detect if someone has uh, attempted to manipulate the photo. The other thing that I should uh, mention is that. Um, unlike some others who have tried this uh, sort of uh, similar process to address this issue, uh, we use a timed, uh, there's a timer in, incorporated with this. So it gives uh, very limited ability for somebody besides, you know, we're talking about 99% of the people out there. There's always going to be the potential for a super user who's just, you know, has exceptional computer and photo uh, manipulation skills to to try and fool the system, uh, but we make it very difficult because there are filters that uh, can key us into the fact that somebody has tried to manipulate the, the photo. So let's get into negotiating. I've got a site that's got uh, 20,000 actives a month on it. Let's say I'm getting 300 new people coming through a day, 300 new profiles. What's it going to cost me? Well, it's going to cost you less than what it would cost you to try and do this in-house. Not only in terms of developing a system that is as thorough and uh, uh, tweaked out as ours, but also in, uh, in the personnel and whatnot, we can offer the ability to be the third party. There's, there's definite advantages to this being a third party rather than uh, just from credibility alone, like we intend to become uh, the PayPal of verification of, of people. So rather than trying to do that process yourself, you're leaving it to us. That's all we do, and uh, it's going to cost you less than trying to put a system like this in place yourself that would be as uh, viable. Great. John Maitland, you are the CEO and founder of Photo Verified. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Mark.